YouTubers, welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. This video is a part two uh, in our restoration of the Matchbox number 33 Ford Zephyr. So if you haven't yet seen our uh, part one video, which is a full restoration of an original box for this model, pause the video, go ahead and check it out. Um, but if you're here for part two, you're in the right spot. Uh, so up for restoration, you can see uh, this particular Zephyr is in pretty sad shape. Um, it's very play-worn, lots of scratches on the paint. We are going to strip and repaint this model. Um, the glass is not in great shape. Uh, the sides and the back seem to be okay, but the uh, front glass is actually missing a, uh, a pretty large piece and pretty big crack right there in the middle. Um, it's not something we're going to be able to repair, so I've ordered a replacement windscreen for this model. As you can see, most of the original chrome paint is gone. The wheels do look like they're in decent shape. I'm hoping that we can just do a uh, kind of a quick cleanup on the wheels. Um, and then last but not least, you can see the, uh, the tow hook is broken and missing on this. Um, I know it's sort of... Uh, uh, touchy subject. I know a lot of uh, restorers and customizers um, remove the tow hitch, and I never really understood that. I kind of like them. You know, if you think about it, Matchbox and Lesney was trying to also sell campers and trailers and boats and all these other accessory models to go with their uh, their cars, and you can't play with those things unless you can tow them. So I think they added tow hooks to a lot of cars that probably wouldn't normally have had a tow package on them. Um, but it increased the playability. In, in this case, you know, this model, it's already broken, it's already missing. Um, and so I think instead of trying to uh, repair that tow hook, we are going to just go ahead and take it off on this model. So not something I'd normally do, but in this case, I'm willing to make an exception to it. So step one. Uh, first, we got to get this model apart and get all of that old enamel paint stripped off. Alright, so we've got our first hole drilled. I did want to take a few minutes to talk about sort of how I do this um, or something that I think that I do that's a little bit different than some things I've seen on other restoration channels. Um, the first thing is that I always start with my small hole first. Um, when the factory dimpled in the ends of these cars, um, there's a, a nice little divot in there and it's centered on that post. And so if I want to make sure that when I drill that out that I'm as close to the center or the middle of that post as I can be, I want to start in that divot. And so I always start with the small drill bit um, and I drill my hole all the way down um, first. That allows me then to come back with my larger drill bit to take off the flange. Um, that way I'm not having to come back after this whole thing is apart and everything else and trying to center up where that uh, center hole is going to go or trying to keep it in the middle of the post or trying to keep it straight up and down or a lot of the other problems that I've seen from uh, some of the other restorers. So I always start with the, the small hole down the center first um, and then I'm going to switch it up and go to a little bit larger size bit uh, to take the flange off. Because I started with my small hole, now my larger bit even as I drill down, it's going to have that center hole to kind of follow um, and stay gauged in. I do like a really, really sharp bit when it comes to this, so I go very, very slow um, and just take a little bit at a time because I don't want to eat into any of the base. So I take just a little bit at a time. We'll try to pry on it. If I'm not quite there, I'll do a couple more turns. Just very small turns. I always take it off more, but once it's gone, it's gone. All right, so if we got enough of our base drilled out, we should be able to get down in there and just gently pry. There it comes up. So 
that's our base and as you can see around the edge um, didn't really get into that with the larger drill bit I wanted to stop before I started getting into the base um, so that is good and here you can also see the uh, the tow hook on the end here um, if this were one of the plastic tow hooks that I could just replace the part and fix it um, I would probably attempt that but because this particular tow hook is part of the casting um, I think it's going to be better for this restoration if I just remove that um, looking at the rest of the car take our interior plastics out here uh, inside actually looks pretty nice um, you can see the uh, wheel suspension piece has the problem that all of them do and that's it's got that little bend in it so we'll use our uh, boiling water method to straighten that back out I'm kind of curious um, so many of these Matchbox Lesney models came with a driver uh, in the in the car um, molded as part of the insert and this one doesn't so uh, that might be something that I look at uh, trying to do on this restoration as well um, and the last but not least we knew this was this was our roughest piece as you can see here this is the reason why I wanted to attempt a restoration on this uh, the original glass and that completely shot that windscreen is toast um, and there's no fixing that so it's a good thing that uh, I've got a replacement windscreen um, this is one I got from MK models um, and as you can see kind of the comparison between the two um, it's a very very good match um, molding is the same I don't know if maybe somehow they got access to the original factory molds um, or something like that but um, you can you can tell the one difference is uh, the aftermarket is much thicker um, you see kind of the the side profiles this is my replacement one um, and hopefully that thicker glass means that uh, stuff like this isn't going to happen again so um, that's kind of the comparison of the, the original very thin and brittle and my aftermarket replacement glass for this model the next step in our restoration is to go ahead and tap our hole um, as you can see I already put a little oil down there on the car um, I do have a link for this tap and the handle that I use down in the video description uh, if you want to check that out all the links are there um, the lubrication really does help quite a bit as the tap kind of eats down and starts cutting some of those metal filings out uh, the lubrication helps um, keep those keep those clear helps them work up kind of those fluid sides so that I don't get too gummed up as I work on tapping that hole um, you do want to go a little ways and then you want to kind of back it out and uh, when you back it out make sure you back it all the way out so you don't need anything up and then I like to just clean off the ends of the tap get all those filings out uh, before I head back at it again and then when I start you want to just kind of let it rest until those until those uh, threads start to grab the tap and then just let it pull itself in so nice and slow I know that it, there are a couple of restorers that have completely given up on the tap altogether and prefer just to uh, let the screw uh, self tap on the holes um, I still like the the actual tap and making sure that that is threaded there we go a little bit down there in the, in the hole here we go and then once I get that all tapped I like to do a test fit with one of my 
standard screws. This is a full length screw and I think, I think the post is long enough on this one, hopefully, to accommodate a full length. So I always do the test fit to see if I need to go deeper with the tap. Looks like this one I do still need to go a little bit further down with this tap. Now that we are drilled, tapped, and have our screw seated all the way down, uh, we're ready to strip this and go to paint. For stripper, I've tried a lot of different things, and I always seem to come back to such a strip. It's just so easy to work with, so much easier on my hands. I can do it inside in my shop, and uh, don't have to worry about fumes or breathing anything. Um, and it works a little bit slower than some of the, the other strippers that are out there. Um, but it does a good job, even if I gotta give it a couple coats. While I'm waiting on my stripper to dry, I figured I would go ahead and take a first stab at trying to remove this tow hook uh, to do that, I've got a metal uh, cutting wheel on my Dremel tool, um, and I'm going to see what I can do about just cutting that off and maybe grinding it down. The rest of this base really is not in bad shape. Um, I really question whether or not I need to uh, even strip it or clean it at all. Um, I mean, there's a couple little scratches here, but I almost think we could we could touch those up. Uh, maybe just with the airbrush or, or a brush. Uh, the axles, you know, they're not rusty at all. My wheels aren't rusty. Um, I think I can probably use some steel wool just on the, the uh, mushroomed ends here of the factory axles. But I might leave this base alone because it's really not in too bad a shape. Um, the only thing I want to do is take off that tow hook. So as you can see, I have finished my removal of the tow hook. Um, I wanted this to look as close to maybe, you know, what it would have been coming out of the factory as I could get it. Um, so we've smoothed up the end of the casting here. So it's all nice and even and smooth. I also wanted to keep that little lip that kind of runs around the hole. So as I filed and as I've sculpted and shaped that. I wanted to keep that hard edge there on the edge of the lip. Um, I did end up taking off a little more paint through here than I wanted to, but you know, part of that was just really trying to get this casting uh, to be nice and smooth so that when I do do a uh, touch up paint over the top of it, um, that you can't ever tell that there was work done over here. So. All together, pretty happy with how that's come out. I've um, got a few little areas that I think I can still continue to sand on, and we'll get those cleaned up, um, and we'll move into touch-up paint. So to do the paint touch-up, uh, the black on the base here, I have loaded my airbrush with a little bit of my uh, Wicked, Wicked Colors uh, airbrush paint this is just the straight black um, and I've gone about equal parts uh, black with the um, reducer with it to get the right consistency to get it flowing through my airbrush so I'm going to start out a couple very light coats 
to see what we can get on the end here. This is the result of the touch-ups to the base. Um, as you can see, the little nick that was up front there has been fixed. And then all of our edits, all of our changes to that tow hook area in the back have also been cleaned up. Um, so all in all, for not having to remove the wheels, not having to mess with the axles, uh, being able to make that tow hook repair, I'm pretty pleased with how this base has turned out. Um, so our strippers had uh, about 20 minutes or so to sit, so I'm going to take a look at our casting and see if we can get some of that paint stripped. So this is our first stab at the paint here. Let's see how our citrus strip is doing. I was expecting this to actually be pretty good just because this model started out being so play worn and it seems like usually when a little bit of that paint has already started to come up that that citrus strip usually uh, has an easier time of getting in there and we'll take it right off Kind of for our first stab, that's not too bad. We're gonna give it one more, uh, one more shot, and usually the second one round is where we get most of it off. So our second round has had uh, probably about 20 or 30 minutes now to sit, and we'll see how this works out. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we're getting it off. Look at that, the side's almost clear already. So, I'm just gonna take, I just like using a toothbrush. Um, kinda works after, uh, after I've had one for a while and it really starts to get warm, I can chuck it away. I go to the dentist every three months and every time I go, they give me a new uh, free toothbrush and uh, I actually have a really nice electric toothbrush that I use to brush every night and so my freebies from the dentist are what I use for my matchbox. So let's go ahead and get that rinsed off and see what we're starting with. So after getting our casting cleaned up you can see that our citrus stripper did a pretty good job. Uh, most of the paint from the interior is gone, most everything on the outside is gone. There's a few of these little areas, these little cracks, and a couple little pieces on the edge. Um, so I'm going to go over all of those little grooves and every every piece in there uh, with my dental picks. Um, I've got a, a link to those in the description, um, but they are just about the perfect tool for getting down. I don't want to lose any of the details on the casting, um, so i got to be really, really careful with how um, how I get in there to get the rest of that paint. And honestly, I'm painting this back the same original color. So if I miss a few small areas um, and I'm coming back with the same enamel paint that was used originally by Lesney, um, you know, I shouldn't have any, any issues with that. But really impressed. You can see the uh, Zephyr 6 right there on the casting. The detail on these is just absolutely incredible. Um, you know, one of one of my favorite things about uh, the Matchbox was all the little details. I think it is what set them apart from Hot Wheels. So, um, not too bad. Happy with the strip. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead get the last of these little areas cleaned up and get this cleaned and prepped for paint. 
All right, so now that I've had a few minutes to kind of go over this with my picks, um, you can see I've got every last stitch of the original paint off of this. Got all the grill cleaned out, um, all those little details along the door. You know, all the detail is still intact, um, but I've, I've been able to get rid of all the paint. Um, there were some casting lines up here kind of across the top of the door that were a little messy. Um, and to clean those up, I like to use just an emery board. Um, and I've, I left this one back here. You can see sort of that, that casting line that runs right, let's see if I can point this out, right here, down the body. Um, you know, that's not something that you would have ever seen in the original car. And so I can take my emery board and I like to use the, the nail file type boards um, because they have a soft side and a coarser side. So I'm using my soft side here just right along that body line to see if I can eliminate and clean up some of those, some of those casting marks. It doesn't have to be too perfect. Remember, we're trying to do something that's similar to what would have come out of the factory at Lesney, um, but makes it just a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer to get rid of some of those casting lines that probably shouldn't be there. Um, so really happy with this. I did also want to share one of my other secrets, and that is that I use a pair of these. Um, these are a magnifier. This particular set actually has a, a light on it as well so that I can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm not terribly old. I turned 35 this year, um, but you know, even I need some help sometimes <laughs> seeing some of these really close up details and making sure that that's really clean and ready for paint. So um, I've also got a link to those down in the description if you are looking for a uh, magnifier headset. Um, been really happy with these ones. They've got interchangeable lenses and I can change them out for whatever I want. So now that this is all cleaned up, um, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, screw glued on so we are prepped for paint. After many trials and errors at trying to find the correct uh, match to the original paint, Got one of my other models that I can paint match to. Um, this was my first stab. It was a little too green. This is my second stab, which I felt like was the right color, just wasn't quite dark enough. And I finally have settled on my third, which is, I think, a very, very close match to the original. But I have used damn near every color of paint that I have. Um, the, the key to this is really just adding small amounts. I'm doing one drop, maybe a drop and a half at the most, every time I make an adjustment. Um, and that's why I like these little eye droppers. Uh, make sure that I don't use too much paint. It helps me work clean, keep everything picked up. Um, the other thing that I absolutely would be up a creek without a paddle over is uh, this little thing. So this is, um, it's actually a cappuccino frother. So it's made to like go in milk and froth milk, but I use it to mix my paint. So as I've touched on in my earlier videos, um, I don't prep, or I don't uh, prime my models. Um, the only prep I do on these is I wipe them down with a little lacquer fluid on a cotton ball just to make sure that that metal is all clean and smooth um, and that I don't have any oils or residue or anything from my fingers. Other than that, I go real light to start and then uh, just immediately start working myself into a final coat. So that, that's about as dark as I want to go 
on a first coat um, just to kind of give you an idea you can see there's just a little tack kind of over the whole model um, but it's not not final by any means um, so that's about how thick each one of my layers is that I want to lay down not not any much more than about what you see there so I'm just gonna keep at it keep going here all right so after I blew out most of the paint that I worked so hard to get color matched right um, I've started over here is my second round of color matched paint and I'm gonna get ready to uh, load up my airbrush uh, for my second coat on the car. All right, so as you can see on this one, I've gone a lot heavier, a lot thicker um, on my second coat. I want to start to try to get some of that wet look in there, um, building towards probably, I think on this one, my third coat will probably be my last one. So I want it thick enough that it looks factory um, and gets a little bit of that shine. But if I go too thick, I'm going to get runs where I'm gonna to start to lose some of those casting details. So I wanna be really, really careful uh, where I stop. It's so one thing I do like to do when I'm cleaning up. Um, anytime I've done like I did today and I've mixed up way, way more paint than I need. I mean, I've got almost half of a uh, two ounce container there. Um, I keep all of my old paint bottles anytime I'm out of something and I'll wash it rinse it with uh, lacquer thinner uh, to get all of the old enamel paint out of there and loose so when these are clean um, then I can use them to store some of my extra paint so um, today I'm, I've got quite a bit of extra so I'm just gonna pour these right back in the bottle and I can use those in the future because it's it's good paint. Um, and these little things that I like the testers, they're not as expensive as a lot of the other brands. I think each one of these is only two to three dollars. Um, but you know, it, there's no point in me throwing it away just because it's not a particular color anymore. I can still use that. I can use it on future restorations, or um, I can mix it. So this one, I've got a little bit of the dark that I actually used. I've got a little bit of the light. I've got a little bit of the first one left over. So I'm just gonna dump these all together and I'm gonna blend it and see what I come up with. And this is one of the very best parts of doing the paint mixing the way that I have is when I'm done, all of this stuff can be thrown away, can be recycled. Um, so here are my three custom colors that I mixed this time, my light, medium, and then the dark one, uh, the final one that I actually used on the model. So I may mark that, may uh, put a little you know, scratch out over the original label and put a new label on that this was the paint I used for the uh, for Zephyr. Um, but good tip, any kind, you know, anytime you're mixing paints, um, if you end up with a bunch of extra, keep all of your empties so that you can keep all of that extra paint. Um, and like I said, I really like using these things. They sure make uh, my life a lot easier when I start doing this. So um, try it out and tell me what you think about uh, using the pipettes and the little cups for mixing paint. So the suspension piece that I pulled out of the bottom has a little bit of a curve to it, which is not unusual. Um, for these older models as the cars you know were played with and wheels would push up 
they would get this sort of bend in them. In order to correct that and to push the wheels back down, I've got some water that I just boiled and I'm gonna put this in and actually I think I'm gonna use um, some of my locking pliers for this just so I can hold on to it. And I'm gonna put that down in the boiling water just to soften that plastic. Now the key to this um, in getting it to stay straight after you've uh, heated it is to actually plunge it into um, some cold water while you have the bend corrected. So I've also got a glass of just cool uh, tap water here. So this has had a few minutes. So it should be nice and soft when I take it out. And then while I've got the reverse bend put back in this, I'm gonna place it down in the cold water. Now when I've done this in the past, it doesn't always work the very first attempt. Sometimes I've gotta do this a couple times. So as you can see, that's better than it was, but it's not bent all the way back straight yet. So we'll give it one more soak. On all of the other pieces, I've got the interior all cleaned up, um, just a toothbrush and some worn soapy water. Um, our paints had some time to cure on the body. I haven't yet added in the uh, silver. We're gonna do that in a few minutes here. Um, and as you can see, the base with the uh, removed tow hitch is all nice and done. Um, I was able to get all of the paint touched up on this without actually having to remove the wheels. The axles all look shiny and good. And after we get our new suspension piece back in, uh, they'll actually ride where they are supposed to in the car. So the base, uh, I was able to just touch up the original base, um, the scratches and nicks, and the area that I removed the uh, tow hook from. And then we have our reproduction glass that's ready to go back in. So this has had a few minutes to sit in that hot water. Again, we're gonna to try to bend it the opposite direction and then go into the cold. And I think that is gonna do it. To add back the silver accents on the front of the car and on the rear bumpers, um, I'm gonna go to my silver paint pens. Now, uh, some of you may be familiar with these or not. This is the uh, liquid chrome pen from uh, Molotov. Uh, these are great. They are the closest things to the original chromed um, toy pieces. Uh, was originally tipped off to these things by the uh, uh, Toy Ploy channel. Um, they are expensive. I think this one pen was like 10 or $12. Um, and they don't last very long. This is the second or third one I've ordered now. Um, and the, the liquid chrome does take a really, really long time to dry. Um, usually two to three weeks really before you can touch it. Um, in this case, I'm going more for the original silver than a chrome. So I'm gonna go back to my Pilot pens. Uh, these came in a two pack. I got a gold and a silver. Um, and the silver I have found to be a remarkably close match to the original silver that was done by Moko Lesney. Um, the other thing I like about these is these are a very fine tip pen. So for a lot of the details, um, I don't even need a brush. I can actually just go straight to the car and apply it right across. Um, this is also really helpful on models that I only want to touch up, that I'm not doing like a full restoration on. Um, and for areas where I wanna get a little more detailed, like the front of the car here, what I actually like to do is take this pen kind of on the back of one of these and get just some of the ink to come
come out. be getting more than that out. There we go. Let me do that. So I can get a little of that paint just out of the pen onto a fine brush and then apply that just like the ladies at Lesney used to do. I don't get too wrapped up in being too exact because again, I'm doing a restoration that's supposed to be in the same vein as what these were originally. And these were done on an assembly line. And the girls at Lesney would grab one flying down the assembly line. They'd have a few minutes to touch it up and paint it before it was getting packaged and shipped. So they were much, much better at this than I am. And likely only had a few seconds to do each model before they had to send it on. for a rear bumper. On the front, I'm actually gonna start on each side of center support. Kinda come down the radiator there. And the reason I like the brush for stuff like this is it lets me get down in these harder to reach areas where I know the tip of my pen is too big to reach. And actually, the hard part of doing these is not doing one side, it's doing the second side, making it look like the first. So if I look at one of my earlier uh, models of this car, you can see that they've painted right to the underside of the grill, all the way across. They painted that center support and they paint, uh, painted the bumpers, both front and rear. Um, one difference on this is the rear on the original was split, was painted half and half because of the tow hitch in the middle. On our restoration, we've removed that tow hitch, so I went ahead and painted all the way across. So, got about halfway across the front. I'm gonna start on this other end now. Get our front, got our back, and 
now I think I just need to take some time and let that all dry. So I've let the enamel paint uh, cure out now for about five days. Um, I really like working with the enamels and I think it gives a much nicer, uh, more true to original finish uh, on the cars, but it does take a long time for it to, to really set up and dry. Uh, so this is about five days uh, post spray time to let that all cure out and to let my ink for all my silver dry but we're finally ready to start reassembly so I'm gonna take my reproduction glass um, and this on this casting the inside of of the dash actually overhangs so you kind of have to tuck this under and then pop it pop it down in there um, got my original interior again all we had to do to this was just clean it up a little soap and water Put my supports for my wheels in there. And then our touched up base. I'm gonna put the little nubbin in the front, the back down, and then reassemble it with our threaded screw. And that will do it. Thanks again for watching this week's episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration. Uh, here you can see our completed Ford Zephyr. I'm uh, pretty happy with how this one came out. It, uh, it really gave me a lot of fits and troubles. Had a lot of issues with the paint, um, trying to get the, uh, the screw threaded in properly. Um, really, I mean, this is one of the more difficult cars that I've attempted, but uh, I am really, really pleased with the end result and uh, how nice this final car came out. Um, so definitely thanks for watching, for following along with this video. Um, as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. Um, I do read every single comment that I get. I want to know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, um, and appreciate uh, all the support from my viewers. So. Thanks again for hanging out with us uh, this weekend, and tune in next week for another restoration video.